So far, we've been learning about controlling motor velocity by changing the voltage provided to the motor. But to successfully use DC motors in our robots, we will need to control not just the velocity, but the position of the motor. Fundamentally, there are two ways we could do that, open loop or feedback control. In this video, we'll be learning the difference between these options. The fundamental difference between open loop and feedback control is the use of a sensor. With open loop control, we do not use a sensor, and with feedback control, we do. We could visualize the difference between these two types of control by using something called a block diagram. In a block diagram, we use a block to show each part of our system that takes an input and produces an output and we use an arrow to show each signal in our system. In our system, a signal is any quantity that changes over time. Here are a couple of examples. In our control system, we have a motor that will be represented by a block. The motor takes an input, voltage, and produces an output, velocity. Voltage and velocity are both signals because they're quantities that can change over time. We get to control the voltage signal and the motor turns the voltage into velocity. We could also add another block here that is an integral and then we could get position out instead of velocity. Feedback control has another block that reads the position. We then use the position that we read to decide what voltage to produce for the motor. Because of the use of a sensor, open loop control is less complex, less expensive, and, we'll learn more about this as we go, always stable. Feedback control, on the other hand, is more accurate. Let's learn more about this by trying both kinds of control. Let's start with open loop control. To implement open loop control, we will calculate how much time it will take to get the motor to a desired position at a particular speed, and then we'll set the speed of the motor, wait the specified amount of time, then turn the motor off. Let's try it. We already know how fast the motor will turn at each compare value, so we can implement open loop control. Suppose that we will apply 5 volts so that the motor turns 350 RPM as we learned previously. And suppose we want the motor to turn 90 degrees or one quarter of a revolution. We take 1 over 350 minutes per revolution times 1 quarter revolutions times 60 seconds per minute times 1,000 milliseconds per second equals 42.85 milliseconds. Now, to apply 5 volts, we need to apply 5 sixths of the total 6 volts from the external power supply. So that means that we have to set the compare value to 5 sixths of the period value. And since our period is 100, that means that we have to set the compare value to about 83. Let's write the code. First, right click on the sensors project and click on save sensors as. Rename this project as something like control. This way, we'll still be able to get to the sensors project, but we can change this project to do more control things. Check all of these boxes here, and then click Rename. Now make sure the control project is set as the active project. It should appear in bold in your Workspace Explorer. Go to the top design, and we'll start by deleting some things that we do not need. We're not going to be reading an analog sensor in this project. 
and we're also not going to use the switch. So delete this switch and delete this ADC block along with its pin. Now go to main.c. We'll start by deleting some of the things we don't need here. We're not going to read the potentiometer. So we also don't need these ADC lines. We calculated 83 as the compare value that we want to set. So let's change the compare value to 83. And we calculated the delay to be 43 milliseconds. So we'll put that and then we'll change this to zero so that we stop the motor. Then I'll make this other delay much longer so that we have five whole seconds to watch what happens. Then I'll delete all of the other things inside of this loop. So all we're doing here is we turn on the motor at 83 percent delay for 43 milliseconds turn off the motor and then delay for five whole seconds let's start by building this project to make sure that we don't have any errors if you get warnings here that's okay but if you get errors stop and solve your errors by comparing your code carefully against mine. I got six warnings. That's okay. Zero errors is what we want. Plug in the PSOC and then program the PSOC and let's watch what happens. After the PSOC is programmed, plug in the external power supply. Now watch the behavior of the motor. Let this run for a number of different cycles and make some observations about what you see. As we watch the motor horn turn, notice some characteristics. The amount that the motor turns is pretty close to 90 degrees, but not exactly. As more turns are made, the motor starts to drift. That is, the error adds up over time but the motion is very smooth and fast. Also, notice that I can turn the motor horn with my hand and the control algorithm doesn't care at all. This event where an external force affects the motor position is called a disturbance. One of the characteristics of open loop control is the inability to reject these disturbances Next, let's set up feedback control. The most simple type of feedback control is called on-off control. In this type of control, we will start by turning the motor on in the forwards direction. Next, we'll take a reading from the sensor and we'll check if the current position is less than the target position. The target position is the position we're trying to get the motor to move to. If the position is less than the target position, we want to continue turning the motor on forwards. If the position is not less than the target position, the next thing we want to do is check if the position is greater than the target position. If the position is greater than the target position, in that case, we want to turn the motor backwards in order to go back to the target position. If the position is not greater than the target position, the only possibility left is that the position is exactly equal to the target position. And so in that case, we want to turn the motor off. 
Now, instead of ending here, we want to immediately go back to check to see if the position is less than the target. By doing that, we can successfully reject disturbances. In other words, if I would reach out my hand and turn the motor shaft away from its target position, we would be able to notice that by using the sensor and correct for it. Also, notice that in this flow chart that I've drawn here, we have loops. We have several arrows looping back to create loops in our code. This is a characteristic of feedback control. In feedback control, you will have loops connecting sensor checks to motor actions. In open loop control, we do not have loops in the code at all. Here in our code, let's start by getting a count from the quadrature encoder. We'll call this count one. Now we need to get a second count after the motor has been turned on. We'll call this one count two. One way to make a while loop for our code is to check the count difference. We could continue doing this control algorithm as long as our count difference is less than a quarter of a turn, which would be 203 counts. In this case, we would then, inside this while loop, take another count, recalculate the count difference, And then after the while loop, we would stop the motor. However, this is a problem because it won't ever allow us to reverse direction if we go too far. Instead of doing a while where we check the count difference, a better way to do this kind of a control loop is to time it. Let me show you how we could time this control loop. Let's change this while loop to execute while time is less than 5,000. We're going to use the time counter to keep track of how many milliseconds we've been executing the control algorithm. We can declare the time variable as an integer. And then every time inside this while loop, we'll increment the time counter. And we will wait for one millisecond. That way, we will give our motor five seconds, no more and no less, to get to its target position. Two hundred and three is our target position. That's one quarter turn. So if the count difference is less than two hundred and three, the target position, in that case, we should turn the motor forwards. Else, that is, if the count difference is not less than 203, in that case, we want to check if the count difference is greater than the target position, 203.
If it is, we want to turn the motor in the other direction. The way we turn the motor in the other direction is by setting the compare value to the other motor lead. Else, that is, if the count difference is exactly equal to the target position, 203, in this case we want to turn the motor off. We turn the motor off by writing the compare value of zero to both motor leads. Also, up here at the top of the while loop, let's add a line to reset the counter back to zero. That way, we won't overflow the counter as we let this code run for a long time. In practice, if we're only rotating within about 360 degrees, uh, we wouldn't need this, but for our testing, this will help us out. Now, program the PSOC and observe the behavior of the motor. If your motor increments 90 degrees and then stops, every five seconds or so, this code is working correctly for you. If the motor spins in one direction continuously, that could be happening because the, you have the two motor leads reversed relative to how my motor leads are plugged in. One way to solve this is just to unplug the two motor leads and reverse them. As we run this, note a couple of things. First, this control is unstable. The jittering that you observe occurs because the motor goes beyond the target point, reverses direction, overshoots again, reverses direction again, and so on forever. This instability is always possible with feedback control, but never possible with open loop control because we never reverse direction with open loop control. Secondly, if you turn the motor away from the target point and then let it go, the motor will snap back to the target point. This disturbance rejection is possible only with feedback control and not possible with open loop control. As we move forward with our learning about position feedback control, we can set up another positioning system that will end up being more useful to us, a rack and pinion. In the next video, we'll learn how to set up the rack and pinion and we'll test it with our on-off control.